Hey, and welcome to High 45, a discussion about the future impact of this week's tech and world news leaning towards the singularity and we're high money stuff and <laughs> we're going to come with a, a spear, like help us out with something. I'm Nathan Waters. I'm Tristan Grace. And welcome. Yes, Hive Mind again. Yeah, sorry again about the uh, delay in getting Massive these out. delays, yes. Been very, very busy here. Uh. And also, I don't have a laptop because um, someone spilled a beer on it and it died. During a party really actually promoting 9crawford.com. Yeah, the whiteboardy thing. I think we explained it in one of the other ones. I think so, yeah. Gimmicky type site, yeah. You could draw on our walls if you wanted to. But yeah, we've already lost one laptop. So, unfortunately, we've got to find a new computer. How many more must we lose? Yeah, but we're just going off mine. Anyway, lots of stuff this week. Lots of really, really awesome stuff. Like your, what's your first one? Uh, that one, three. Okay. Well, that's okay. all I'm so saying. three, fair that's enough. That's all I'm saying. Uh, my next one is uh, Google's April Fool's prank, but someone actually made it. That's kind of cool. <laughs> Oh yeah, sorry, me, um, X prizes and uh, algorithms. Sweet. Uh, then a predator, a camera that actually learns, which is kind of sweet. Then our uh, singularity topic for the week is uh, Bitcoin and uh, cryptocurrency and all of that stuff. It's very interesting. Definitely it's stick around weird. for that one. Good fun. It. Um, so um, anyway. Go to the three one. Yeah, um, let's get started on three. You missed it. Yeah, okay, I'll, don't play it. We'll play it over the top. Well, we'll play yeah. it now. Can't. Oh, no, he's not right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so anyway, this is, uh, 3 is actually 3, the phone type company, I'm guessing there is what they are. That's what they do here. Yeah. Anyway, they, they actually put together this, um, kind of like a, a online shopping concept where instead of going to like an online store, as you normally would, and you go through the product yourself and look for it, they actually connect you on like one-on-one -on -one to actually a sales representative. But what you do is a video conference, so you actually call them up on the, like do a video conference, like a Skype call thing, but I'm guessing it's through their site. And they're standing, there, they're sitting there with like a headset on, but what they're doing is they've actually got on their end a touch interface where they just drag drop the products that you're after. So like say you want to buy an iPhone or something like that or an Android, like some kind of phone, you just drag, they drag and drop it up and it comes up on your screen and you see all these other details and stuff pop up. Hell yeah. And then they're talking in real time while you're doing this and it's just like, it's minority report for sales. It's just, it was amazing. Like... Oh, this, right. this, if if our uh, salespeople actually want a job in the future, if they want to maintain having a job in the future, mm. this is how it's going to happen. It's going to be like one on one kind of retail recommendation because you get all the body language stuff involved. Yeah, and that's yeah. kind of what does more of the sales. And you can ask people about it. Like it's very yeah. much like browsing online now is very. There's so much research, so logical going there. But if you could go to a site, if they have someone pop up and say, "Hey, look." I'm looking for a phone that can kind of do this or do that. Yeah, like, you know, what can you show me? This one. This yeah. one's pretty cool. Oh no, you don't, don't like that one? Up there. Try this one. This one's, cool. this one's awesome. This is cool. They, they, they might be, uh, they three might have be on the actual right path to cracking this because if they can pull that off, that's a, that's a massive change. But at the same time, I doubt they're going to, uh, <laughs> they're just going to sell their own products with this. Yeah. They're not going to relicense it and sell it out to other right. people, I don't think. But that obviously, like if this works, if this concept works, that's obviously what they'll do. Yeah. But um, that'd be awesome for any retail, like mm. except for the overheads. The overheads, I mean, that's expensive. Yeah, well, you just the, well, the other problem is you got to hire someone who looks good. Ah, uh, yeah, true. You don't want some I ugly fucker. People. It's just yeah. That might be a bit more expensive. Job. But I mean, the, you wouldn't have to pay them that much, really. Surely they'd make it back in. You yeah. Just, and you'd, you'd work them on a commission type basis, like the other salespeople. Yeah. Well, it could work well. Like, I mean, if they're actually seeing increased sales actually going over yeah. by actually using interaction, yep. it can pay for itself. I like this. And I yeah, really they, they really made like, like a specialized device and stuff as well for all the touchscreen. It could yeah. use like the do the 10 fingers thing so it could... <laughs> I'm sure you could probably do it with some like, you know, off the shelf product and just hack away at it and make yeah. it yourself. Well, I think that'll happen. I think I, we, we should definitely follow this and see how it actually goes because yeah. this could be, well, birth of a new industry. Fun. Well, the survival of an industry. Yeah, true. I guess it is <laughs> the same thing. Yeah. Um, anyway, next one I'll speak about is uh, Google did an April Fool's prank this year uh, for April Fool's. They always do their April Fool's one. It was yeah. actually called a Gmail Motion, which allowed you to access your Gmail client through uh, motion sensors and actually the Kinect, I guess, or just any camera. And you just swipe your hands and then you could uh, send emails and do it all that way. And like, you know, that was a joke. They were laughing about, ha, ha, ha. And then these guys at the ICT lab at uh, Institute for Creative Technologies, ICT, uh, at the USC, so it's a university somewhere, I'm not sure. Uh, a guy called Southern California. Evan, oh yeah, University of Southern California. Evan Suma and uh, Mark Bolas, they uh, ended up creating this. They actually did it. And uh, it's really cool. There's this fantastic video here that actually explains it all. So it's really cool. Like, there's this guy demoing it. Swipes and stuff. 
swipes his hand across here to actually send emails to actually, it's a full on motion um, interface for Gmail. Uh, the, reason I, the reason I brought <laughs> it's it totally up. totally impractical though. Like, exactly. But not going to use it. Again, the, the reason I wanted to bring it up is because now people, especially with the Kinect, I'm a massive fan of the Kinect. I, I really think it is the future at the moment. But people are, are starting to actually build stuff around that actual uh, thing. It's kind of like, you know, the iOS yeah. devices. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a platform now. Exactly. People can actually now start seeing the, the Kinect Even and actually <laughs> any, any visual stuff as the new platform that they're going to start adapting their apps to work yeah. on that, adapting their programs. Even though they still haven't released the official SDK for it yet. I know, it's, it's, I, it's so great. I think that's not out for another few months yet. <laughs> I, I think this is just brilliant. I mean, it's yeah. showing that Google are thinking about it. I mean, the very fact that they made it their April Fool's joke, obviously, they were hoping someone would do this and then it was done. But the weird thing is it's using Microsoft technology Mm. To fulfill it. Mm. True. Well, Microsoft. Google innovators. versus Microsoft. <laughs> Indeed. I like at the end where he's just like, he just laughs. He's just, yeah. he's like, I can't hold this. This is, this is retarded. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not an actual, uh, like, you know, very <laughs> useful application at the moment for email. But I mean, it's again, finding that standard and actually people developing their own apps for motion sensitive things. Yeah. There's another story I wanted to talk about, like a, a, a connect on a quadricopter, and that was really cool. But I might talk about that. <laughs> yeah. I'm always talking about connect. I'll Too like much it. about the connect. Yeah. So anyway, it, at this I just really like just because Google's move by obviously doing this is looking towards the practicality of actually putting apps on motion censored devices. You reckon, or do you, do you think it was just an so. April Fool's joke? No, I, I think they actually had it behind. Oh, that, that's how they launched Gmail. Was there an April Fool's? It, it, it's not practical oh, at really? the moment. Yeah. Gmail was launched as an April Fool's joke saying, oh my god, a website where you had one gigabyte and it was always increasing. Everyone laughed at them and then they released it for real. Oh. <laughs> it was great. That's a good move, yeah. Yeah. So, no, I, I like it that the big good guys tactic. are now starting to think motion sensor might actually start to be the new platform. So if you're yeah. in developers or anything like that, maybe start focusing on that and hear on the ground floor. Exciting. There, there, there are like voice recognition stuff now is brilliant as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's, there's a few articles out about how just amazing it is. Like I just tried it today again, even though it's on my phone, it has been on forever. It's like you can actually ask it like really complicated questions and it'll just pick it up instantly and then answer it straight away. Uh, I've been doing that a lot more recently. Um, just because I hate typing on my iPhone. It's yeah, but like it's a pain in the ass. You only it's, it's something you only ever do like alone. You're not going to talk oh, into your phone and ask a question around a whole bunch of other people? I, I did that last it's... night at, at, at John's. We went to an engagement party. I, I did it then. You asked into your phone? I asked into my phone. Someone was saying something. And so I said in my drunken slurred speech, I spoke into my phone. <laughs> and it was right. I was like, yes! <laughs> and then it searched for and it took me and to... And now, now your page. voice, that voice recording is somewhere on Google's mm. servers. That's a depressing thought. Drunken Being Australian number 9,420. <laughs> They could probably actually work out if you were drunk or not. Yeah, they probably Based could. Based on your voice signature. They really could. It'd be awesome. <laughs> Indeed. Anyway, uh, it's, like, it's like all these recordings. We're just like slightly tipsy and they're all being recorded. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> Had a few. Uh, anyway, oh, this is awesome. This is very, very awesome. This is an idea that I've had for a long time and it's actually starting to happen. Like all my ideas. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Hey, Android's kicking ass right now. iPhone. And you losing. came up with Android. You did. And there's others. Go, <laughs> go watch all the rest of them or something. Hey. <laughs> like, okay. Anyway, this is cool. Um, this is about X prizes for algorithms. Ooh. X prizes for algorithms. What's this an is, X prize. This is related to the whole recommendation shit I keep spouting on in previous episodes. Um, an X prize is basically the idea of you put up a prize and say. For a million dollars, if you reach this goal, you wait. If you reach this goal, you get a million dollars. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? And um, the first one was actually uh, by the X Prize Foundation, which was started by Peter Diamandis, who's involved in the whole Singularity stuff. He's actually chairman of the Singularity University, mm -hmm. I think. Um, yeah, and the first one was a ten million dollar prize for first private sector group able to fly a reusable spacecraft a hundred kilometers into space twice within two weeks. And that was, that was won by uh, Paul Allen and another guy. So, Microsoft co-founder and another dude who... I should have mentioned him. Well, then they're now... Bert Rutan. Now they're being used as um, the uh, Virgin guys, aren't they? Isn't that Spaceship One? Uh, no, no, Google's doing a Lunar Prize competition. Well, That's wasn't one. the guys who won the X-Prize, so they're the ones who were Spaceship no, 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 One? No, think, no, that was someone else. I think they had something in that as well. Oh, okay. I'm not sure. Okay. Anyway, yeah, X Prize Foundation, they do a lot of stuff now. Like, they even do um, things for, you know, overcoming our energy problems and stuff like that. But um, the, the X Prize model is just brilliant because it's 
you basically you put up a, a single prize and the amount of teams you actually get working on this is insane. Like that's the whole point. You, you put up a million dollar prize. Netflix was one that did it really awesomely. Netflix put up a million dollar prize to improve their recommendation algorithm by 10%. Mm. And they had like thousands of teams putting in hundreds of thousands of man hours and they didn't have to pay anyone until they actually hit the target that they set, 10%. And that's what happened. Someone hit 10%, they paid them a million dollars, which was like probably vastly so much more cheaper than actually doing it internally. And it was 10% to increase the recommendation of their algorithm. Increase it by 10%. Right, right, right. right. And all these systems do at the moment, they're, they're, they do the basic thing of like, they have two data sets, like say one for, you know, 2009, one for 2010. And you have to basically use the 2009 data to predict the 2010 data. Oh yeah. And that's all it is. Uh, it's yeah. really, really simple, and but there's a ton of like algorithmic type mathematical analytical yeah. stuff which is involved. But um, actually, leading on from that, what's happened recently is there's a company, an Australian company actually called Kaggle that's come out, mm. and they've come, they've been out for a while now, and I've been following them closely, but we just haven't mentioned them. Um, but yeah, they've actually been doing a similar thing with like little you know uh, X prizes for algorithms. More so than say the big stuff that XPRIZE Foundation yeah, does. Yeah, 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 right. Um, and the latest one they've actually picked up, they've, they've so far they've had a lot of little boring like few hundred dollar <laughs> prizes that have right. just been pathetic, like ugh, so horrible. But anyway, the the latest one they're doing is a three million dollar um, prize from the was it Heritage Health? Can you? I've forgotten the name. Uh, Heritage Health, I'm pretty sure. Heritage, Heritage Health Venture. Prize, yeah. Mm. And it's basically a $3 million prize to predict with data uh, which patient, patients from a, mo a model set are likely to be hospitalized in the next year. Hells yeah! That's so awesome! They basically look at data and say, you know, work out who's going to be hospitalized in the next oh. year because then they can do like preventative uh, medicine and stuff for those people. Oh, and brilliant. Insurance companies are obviously insurance companies are going to very, really very in in sucks. inside about this. I'm sure that's why, it, that's what's propelling it, the insurance companies. But anyway, yeah, this this idea of actually having X prizes for algorithms yeah. actually, you know, increasing certain, you know, algorithmic type programming logic information. Okay, that's that's kind of cool. Awesome. Yeah. So okay, so it's actually to increase the actual uh, how how much they can predict what data set yeah. will actually be hospitalized. It's it's human computation basically Sweet. To, to work out to come up with a better aim. So they've got like the data released or something and then people can actually start modifying yeah. it to try and get it better. Yeah, and, 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 yeah. and it's open to everyone. You can go down like, go download all the data and try it out. That's brilliant. It's just... I'd love more of this. This would be very useful, I feel. Yeah, well the thing I... I the, my idea for this is eventually um, to do more of like a real-time XPRIZE model, but actually mm. don't keep it in the... The problem is at the moment it's all stuck in academia. Like academia. Mm. The only people that can actually work out what to do with this data are the people who are doing like... Um, quantitative analysis and mm. stuff in actual academia. I, I still feel so. like it, it needs to be paid more often. Uh, like, I mean, obviously by the, the nature of the award, you can't. Uh, but say with things like going to space and stuff, that's already like a human desire. That's always so much fun. Yeah. And say some of the more boring things like improving fuel efficiency or yeah. say something <laughs> like that. It's not going to be not a labor of love. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, if they could get paid out quicker, like they had really short milestones, that could be kind of cool. Oh, these guys have milestones. Oh, okay, sweet. I mean, that wouldn't be hard to implement. That's, that'd be great. Yep. You'd say, hey, look, as the first person yep. to get up to here, and so then that allows companies to form around just yep. finishing these so they can just get to the first few milestones. You make all their data, anything they create has to be totally open. That yep. would be kind of sweet. Oh, okay, from each milestone. Yeah. So it's essentially like it's a, an X price split up into parts, but each yeah each part kind of resets it. Exactly. Everyone actually shows the code or shows what they actually use to get to that milestone. And yeah. then I think that would actually be worth giving money for that milestone. It propels it, yeah. Yeah, because then you actually allow companies to form around just solving these. Whereas at the moment, you can't. Because like if you yeah. only can get it, like say, once or twice, you don't know when it will pay off. It's not possible. It's yeah. a good idea too, because uh, like as as you get to the hi the higher levels, it becomes a lot harder. So exactly. you should pay out more for. And you can start like everyone will start trying going for the lower stuff to just quickly yeah. improve it, and then in those really big ones where you get the million dollar prizes, and then everyone's like, like kind of working with that. And, like I remember yeah, with the Netflix fun. prize, actually, to to get to the ten percent, uh, the two top teams actually had to combine. Um, they had right. to join forces and right. combine their data together to actually just hit over like and get an extra like you know point of a percent or something. Right. That's awesome. Like, and they had to do it, yeah. 
Cool. So this is this is going to be a really big thing in the future. Yeah, I, I think so too. I like this whole years, least, yeah. prize thing. Especially, I mean, for a few million dollars, this is Ooh. cheap R&D. Very cheap R&D. Yeah, that's the thing. For, uh, Peter Diamandis uh, had a, uh, an interview at once. And he, yeah, it's a cool name, man. <laughs> it is. A, um, and he actually it. said at one stage, which I thought was amazing, and I'm sure you mentioned this before, that X Prizes would be brilliant for government R&D. Hmm. Because the government just says, okay, we have to... Yeah, contracting, yeah. Yeah, we, we, wanna, we, we have a certain problem. We want it to be solved. Here's the, here's the issues that needs to be solved. We'll put up a million dollar prize or something to whoever solves it and reaches these milestones. And then, boom, done. And that way, they put up the money. If no one achieves it, nothing happens. Yeah. If someone achieves it, awesome. Yeah. So that way, there's absolutely no risk for the government. Cause, like, can, can you imagine the government trying to solve that problem and they put in millions and millions of dollars themselves and try to do it themselves and fail? Yeah. They're not going to get reelected. If they win, they will, but yeah, yeah, yeah. why not just you know, outsource it to an X-Prize type model where... Yeah, they can actually say, hey, we want this to happen, these are some yeah. milestones. This Everyone is, tries it. This is how it works. And you'd also cut down on like, you know, expensive you know, and really dodgy contracting jobs. Yeah, where exactly. You, you give certain you know, privileged companies <laughs> billions of dollars, like fucking Halliburton and stuff like that. You know? Yeah, the fucking Halliburtons. That's good. It's a sitcom. Can't believe those dun, guys. Dun, 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 dun. It is a sitcom. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> it's good yeah. fun. It's definitely a good way to do R and D. Could be. A, it needs to be fleshed out in a proper system, but I'm keen. Good work. I'll flesh it out. Now, anyway, speaking of some R and D, there is this awesome, awesome guy. He's uh, doing his PhD, did his thesis. Uh, he's called uh, Dennett Callow, and uh, he created a smart camera that learns. Now, holy shit! You have to check this out. Just it is absolutely incredible. <laughs> like I'll play the the video now. Uh, what it actually is, it's it's called the Predator. I love the name. Uh, it's a camera, and it actually tracks something, an object, or yourself, uh, actually around a room. So, like, going back and forth. Now, it does this in a unique, novel way, because what it does is it takes a picture of, of it, like, every few seconds, and then it compares and contrasts to it over time. So, the more that it's actually in the frame and actually recognized as the object, the more it actually learns. So, you can see down the side of the screen now, it's actually got all of the different pictures. So, as he moves around, it's taking a picture, like, you know, every millisecond, and it's like, oh, okay, there's that picture, that picture, and this is how the object's changing and, and moving. So the more time nice. that it's on there, the more it's actually learning. So I can track him more accurately? Yeah. After that? Is that the idea? Yeah, that's it. And now, if it, I'll just keep this playing. Like, I'll talk for a little bit here. There is one thing that just totally blew me away that made me go from, oh, this is kind of interesting into, wow, this is phenomenal. Like, at the moment, you can see with his, like, you know, he's got three fingers up. So you just track this one point. And, like, you can only go slow to begin with, obviously, because it won't be able to detect. If you move too fast, it won't be able to, or twisting. But if you do it slowly, it'll start to learn exactly what, like, you know, twisting and stuff is. So we're talking about, you know, the motion interface, the actual interacting with the computer like that. This could be the exact system to do it. It just it looks at you and learns. Yeah, it learns just over time. And it's a very quick learner. And I mean, when we say learn, it's, it's, an, it's an intuitive way. Like, you understand how it goes because yeah. it's just comparing one picture to the other one. Now, check out this. This is the one that blew me away. So here we go. Well, he's defined this face. He's selected yeah. his face and said, look, this is him. He's moved around a bit, letting it learn. You can see all the pictures coming down on the side. So it's, it's not sure. Then it picks him up again, doing all these other pictures down here, comparing and saying, oh, this is how the object looks. Now, check out this. This is absolutely incredible. Holds up different pictures of people. And it finds him. Ah. It finds him out of a crowd of people. So it's not just eyes and nose and all of that. Out of a crowd of faces, it can actually pick him up. That was pretty quick. This is like ultimate, you know, facial recognition. Where we're talking about, you know, crowds around anywhere you go. Like if this was open, this was all on the net. As it learns, as the data's up there, you can just know straight away. This technology oh, is incredible. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. Is it like hectic, complicated, or is it? It sounds pretty basic. I'm sure there's a lot behind it, but I mean, yeah, he well, explains it pretty well. Because it must just be like pattern recognition, like just takes mm. a whole bunch of images and then just works out what the patterns are. Yeah, it works out how it them. changes, because like as he's turning his head, you know, the object's actually changing and then it realizes yeah. that, oh, this oh, happens, shit. this happens. And he's got a, a great few examples, like, you know, stabilizing things, like there's a, another example that goes down here the, with like, you know, a motorbike going across or a car, as they're going here, you can permanently track a car non-stop. It's very much... He's cracked it, I think. I think this is the this is the thing. This has been cracked, and everyone all over the web have been talking about this. It's just incredible. Watching pandas, I like this one. They're tracking animals in zoos but non-stop. So sure, 
they've already got this out there. Like, mm. just maybe not it's just not publicly well. available. Yeah, true, true. Well, like, surely the military would have, like... You'd think they'd have something very similar. And, and corporations, like, you know they have this. They Surely yeah. they must. This, yeah. This is just like a, hey, one dude's actually cracked it and wants to actually release it out yeah. as a... But then again, have you ever used any application that has been able to work this well? Like, probably proprietary stuff does work that well. But uh, for personal stuff, I've never seen anything this impressive. Yeah, no. So yeah, very uh, definitely a thing to watch. Uh, I could see him getting acquired, or uh, actually working for one of the big players. I really wish it. I think he has opened it up. You can actually test Predator yourself, so he's got it all up. Uh, Google's you know, shot. You think uh, Connect would? Yeah, I know. I just love that, that interface with just the three there. That that's how you write. It's good mm. fun. Love, really love this. Awesome. Indeed. Um, well, let's get on to our main topic of conversation. Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Oh. Very, very exciting. I or can't like, would you wait. call it like the, the future of currency or? It is, ah, uh, sure. The is... future of currency. I, I want to just talk about Bitcoin. To, like, we can go, okay. we can say where Bitcoin can go and stuff, but I think mainly Bitcoin. An example good. of the future of currency. Exactly. So first example of a cryptocurrency. Explain what Bitcoin is to us. Bitcoin is the first decentralized digital currency. And it's run through a peer-to-peer -peer network. So it's a decentralized in that regard. Now, Bitcoin works. It's created by this guy called Sashitoshi Nakamoto. Satoshi Nakamoto, <laughs> yeah. That's just a pseudonym. Uh, no one's actually met the dude. Uh, so he's, oh, a, yeah, yeah. he's just, you know, just a, a voice in the wilderness. Uh, the, the main lead, like, I've been listening to him speak for quite a few things recently. Yep. And he's just a guy who came onto the project about a year and a half ago. He's just been going through that. Only, can't, only came out in 2009, so still very new. Uh, but anyway, the, the, what Bitcoin is, uh, is it's a currency that's run through a peer-to-peer -peer network. Totally right. open source. You can see every single bit of code. And uh, there's, uh, there are these coins, like called a Bitcoin. Yeah. And then you can actually make transactions with people. And the transactions work by uh, sending them to someone else actually connected to the network. And then what happens is when you send a Bitcoin, that's verified throughout the rest of the network. So everyone can actually track where Bitcoins have gone. Right. Um, and yeah, so that means that there's no, no central authority actually issuing Bitcoins. No central bank. No central bank. There's no no leadership at all with it. Like I'm sure there'll be leadership. There's no central leadership. It's until it's, someone acquires all the bitcoins. Well, that that's that's that could happen. <laughs> but there are there are lots of ways around that as well. Uh, it's it's, yeah. it's rather cool. Uh, there, are, uh, it's really quite fantastic. The more you dive into it, it comes up with a lot of problems. But they really have solved a lot of it. And uh, apart from overarching big economical problems, but even then yeah, like are very the, like the whole the the concept isn't it just you earn bitcoins by based on your processing? Yeah, you can do that because that's how they get new bitcoins into the system. It's called a process called mining, uh, and they they new bitcoins enter the system rather than being created by any central authority because that's usually how money comes into a system. Yeah. In bitcoins, uh, money comes into the system at a predetermined rate every hour. Like I think it's about every six times every hour. 50 Bitcoins come into the system and the 50 Bitcoins are randomly allocated by whoever's mining at the time. Now, mining means that you're just using your um, CPU or your graphics card. Like I, I use my graphics card to go mining. I've made about nearly 20 bucks so far off it. So that's pretty cool. Um, and so you use, you do that. And uh, when you're mining, what you're actually doing is verifying payments throughout the system. Yeah. Which is it's really like fantastic. All the encryption stuff it, on it. Yeah. Uh, well, so it's not more the encryption. It's actually just tracking it through because as you think of a peer to peer network, you've got a lot of yeah. people near the center and that can be verified very quickly, but it's those outliers that haven't connected too much that you want to actually verify between the two. Right. So yes. how's, mm -hmm. so how's, so you, it, it automatically creates 50 every, it creates 50, six times every so, hour. Yeah. And that randomly goes out to people. Whoever's been mining yet. So the okay. more... So how's that? Well, the more computation that you have, the higher chance you have of winning. Uh, so, but let's say you bring a supercomputer in, you could uh, quite possibly, you know, end up right. being the one who's actually getting most of them, but then someone else could bring in the supercomputer and do it that way until you reach an equilibrium. Okay. Uh, like the only people who can actually mine effectively that actually makes it less expensive than the electricity they consume are people with high-end graphics cards. Which I was really lucky. Uh, it turns out that the computers that we bought actually allow us to make money. Um, so that's really nice. I've been doing that for quite a while. So how's the... I just don't understand. So, mm -hmm. so that's like how, how new money is put into the system. Mm -hmm. Then how do you like... You, you can buy... How, is that the only way to get bitcoins? Mm -hmm. No, well, yeah, to, that, you that's can, the other or way. Or you can buy them with real money. You can, can actually buy them. There are a lot of marketplaces open at the moment. But, and you're buying them from other people. You're buying them from other people, that's right. But you can actually convert it into actual dollars. At the moment, last time I checked, it was trading at about 70 cents. 
per so Bitcoin. For, per Bitcoin, US. So yeah, you can go sell bad. yours for 70 cents, is yeah. that what you do? Yeah, for 70 cents. So I've got about, I think, 17 Bitcoins. So not, not near 20, it was, right. uh, it was going there before, but so it's around, you know, about 13 bucks or so. Right. Is isn't bad for all the ones that are created there. And like, if you wanted to get in, you'd just convert, you'd buy a few Bitcoins and you'd pay for stuff that way. But yep. the best part is that uh, you can't be tracked with this at all. Totally decentralized. There is no identifying factor at all towards the transaction. And right. that's allowed lots of, uh, well, interesting <laughs> ideas to be created. Isn't there like a drug side of it? There, there was. Uh, like... Not trying to promote that too much though. Uh, oh, no, I, I, it's called I, I, the Silk Road. <laughs> <laughs> not trying to promote. Not trying to promote. It, no. but that's not what Bitcoin's about. But it's still, it's still there. It, it, yeah. They've been shut down recently. Uh, what well, the guy has, he's been overloaded with orders. But again, <laughs> <laughs> it does allow uh, people to. Bands. Well, that's it. Drugs. It does actually allow people to to buy things without uh, having any accountability. So anything yeah. that the governments don't want to actually focus on, uh, that can do it that way. I mean, the obvious next um, question after that would be, well, what about taxation? You can't be taxed with this system. This is totally outside the laws of taxation. So That's you good. accept things in Bitcoins compared to say PayPal or any other currency, no taxation. It's just that there. So again, it's, this awesome. is, um, it's quite an amazing system. I highly recommend uh, checking it out. I, I, I could speak for hours about it. I, I'm a big, big fan of it. Uh, the, the potential for it is just absolutely ridiculous because uh, it could, be the new, <laughs> it, it, it could be the internet currency. It, it could very well be. Um, I, I think it could work very, very well. I still don't, there's supposed to be something else. Though, like the whole idea of like it just randomly generates 50 and then... It does stop uh, after a while. No, no. Yeah, they, I, they said there's like what, 22... 21 million. million. 21 million, 21 million is max. going to be the max. But what happens is at 2013, roughly about half would have been mined. And then it's uh, eventually it just keeps on exponentially going smaller and smaller and smaller, asymptotically like reaching 21 million. So it'll never actually reach it, you just get less and less. So as more and more Bitcoins get generated, it'll go from 50 Bitcoins being randomly generated all the time to 25. So to how 25. does that work? Say, say there's a billion people using this. Mm. Well, what you can do is actually... a million coins for a billion people. No, no, no that, that, that's, that's, that actually works well because what happens is that the Bitcoin protocol, it, you, you are able to reduce the currency down to eight decimal points. So uh, you could get, you'd trade, right. you'd start trading 0 0.000001 of a Bitcoin, which is the most tiny. That is, so it is, it is uh, keeping the whole, um, the gold standard. Essentially. Exactly. There is exactly. A, is a, there's a finite amount that you do basically, you're reducing the value. Yep. As more people actually start using the system. Isn't now, that just like, essentially like inflation though? If you just do that? No, well it's, it's deflation, which is the problem, which is what really, really sucks, which destroys lots of economic systems. Uh, like, you know, doing economics as an undergrad, uh, it was good fun. Like, uh, inflation actually keeps a, uh, keeps the economy going because it keeps on growing. Because the problem with deflation is that because uh, deflation means, like, you know, it's worth more and more and more as time goes on. Right. So that encourages people, say, if I have, you know, the Bitcoins I have now, that encourages me just to sit on them rather than to spend them because by sitting on them, I'm actually earning money. All right, because they... They grow in value. They time. grow in value, whereas inflation yeah. actually encourages me to spend and keep on going. Loses value exactly. Time. Right, and that also increases like the idea of loans so, and going that way. Whereas if I gave out a loan now, I'm actually really losing. So why do they code that in? Well, no, that's just how the the system is there. That that is probably its main failing. Uh, how do they fix that? Well, it's it's difficult. I mean, you, you'd have to actually look at the... If it was a replacement for a whole economic system, I, I don't think that'll work too well. Um, I think this is just going to find its niche. And yeah. It's going to be a very good way to actually, say, trade for other products, for other ideas and stuff. I don't think it's going to replace everything, but I think this could be the precursor to the system that does. Uh, cool. Just uh, at the moment, I can't see any major flaws. I mean, the fact that inflation is the big one means that, holy shit, they fix up a it's lot of big yeah, flaws yeah. with it. <laughs> it's a very incredible system. And I mean, speaking in regards to like the singularity and stuff, this could work very, very well. This could be very much the precursor to the econ economic system that does end up dominating the whole world or uh, ends up going around. Well, that's something we've been thinking about a lot, haven't we? Like, that's, that's kind of yeah, like, yeah. If, if anything, that's probably our ultimate goal oh, at the definitely. moment is to create the next kind of economic yeah. system like we talked about but like in genesis project guy and yeah stuff like that um damn yeah. damn robles yeah, yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> and just other things like that like because at the moment the, the current economic system is all again blah, 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 it's infinite growth on finite resources mm. and it, it, it can work for it yeah and i mean the very fact that it's actually controlled by a few people like don't get me wrong the central bankers can you know smooth things out very much it's lots of volatility within the Bitcoin market at the moment, but still, it's still not... You I, don't want any central control at all. Well, that's it. It should be enough that uh, actually 
it can be separate. Everyone owns it all because I mean that that's yeah. too much power for one organization yeah. or one group. And it can work especially when one. like all the the reserves are very. Mm. Well, they're always being played with. Yeah, yeah, that's it. They're like private uh, firms and stuff. Yeah, and that's why I love this whole decentralized costs. nature. <laughs> It's yeah. a, Bitcoin is fantastic with its decentralized nature. Um, like it's just insane. It, everyone owns it. Like you can see every bit of code. But the glorious part of it, it's open source. Yeah. It's totally open source. It just glorious part is that you need to be verified. Like if you just say I, I can modify the code right now and give myself a million bitcoins, but no one else would verify that. Yeah. And so then if no one else so verifies yeah, yeah. it, then no, <laughs> I don't it's have awesome. a million bitcoins. It's a fantastic, fantastic What's system. The, what was it like? I haven't installed. What was it easy? Just install. Oh, ridiculously one? easy. Yeah. What do you do? Like just download. Uh, you, you download this NXT? thing. It's called a yeah. It's called a Bitcoin wallet. Uh, so one downside is uh, if you're if you store all your coins on your Bitcoin wallet, but say you format it or your computer gets fried. Oh, really? You lose it all. But there are services out there that are kind of like you know secure backups, kind of like banks, I guess, where right. you actually put all of your. Coins well, that should be inherent in the P2P. Everyone should be backing up each other's copies. No, 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 because that's part of the whole anonymity. Type thing that you, you, you can see so where it actually goes. Up, oh, you can't back up like parts? No, well, because so you like, can see what it gets spread out equally to random people? No, well, they can see that the coins actually all came to this one thing here, but say the wallet actually keeps on having a new generated uh, address oh, non stop right. going through, so they can all see that the coins are there, but if you haven't actually said that I'm sending them from this wallet to that there, yeah. then nothing had happened to them. Because it's only that one wallet that have actually received all of the coins can say I'm sending a coin out to here. Once right. you've wiped the hard drive, that means that wallet and that method of sending out those bitcoins has been erased. Yeah. So you back it up online a lot, which is a good idea. So eventually people are just going to end up losing all the 21 million bitcoins. Well, yeah, <laughs> that, that may actually With, all the, with all the reformats and stuff, yeah. See, I, I think if, if that actually becomes like a main problem, I think they've succeeded. Because uh, yeah. then, I mean, they can start a, a, adjusting the system and getting people to go there as long as most people agree. I mean, if that is the major problem of it, then they've, they've succeeded beyond my wildest expectations. I think most of the people developing it as well. Yeah. Um, as of last count, I think there's four and a half million dollars worth of Bitcoins out there. So it's still very small. Like real um, dollars? Real dollars, yeah. Cool. Uh, but still definitely worth getting in on. If, if you're looking for a quick project or some way to actually maybe be at the ground floor of a whole new system, I highly, highly recommend just modifying some existing ones now because they're just going crazy. I've seen some Bitcoin lottos out there. I've seen like, you know, well, obviously the Silk Road. Um, then there have been other marketplaces. There have just been amazing like innovation. People are all talking about doing a futures market, doing, talking, doing lots of other stuff. With Bump, Bitcoins. With Bitcoins, yeah. Awesome. They've talked about, uh, there's this one, uh, there's been a, a, a raffle recently or a, a lotto, uh, not, not a, sorry, not a raffle, a voting system to actually design a nice animation to explain it to other people. And that guy ended up winning six and a half grand worth of Bitcoins off that. Wow. So it's just pretty great. <laughs> um, it, there's a lot of money here to actually be made and just modifying existing systems to work with it is just incredible. Highly recommended it. I think it's going to be a very big system to watch because there's been others out there like, you know, Beans and Flues and Ripple and all those other like, you know, currencies. Yeah. None of them have have all been in central control. They've never actually given it just to everyone. Yeah, it's kind of redefined. You, you can't really ever go on a central control system anymore. No, that this this is like, cracked. Yeah, you have regard. to you have to be a decentralized yeah P two P system. Yeah, this, which this means how really works. How do you make money off that? Well, that's it. <laughs> you create a service that actually it uses. You make, its I mean, you'd make something epic, cool, but hmm. you wouldn't be able to make money off it. Indeed, it'd be like Jimmy Wales type thing. Yeah. Well, that's why I think this has a, a lot of potential. Just uh, again, it's no government control, no taxation. Uh, you, you, there's a fixed amount there, yeah. and I mean, it's just growing all the time. Uh, and we need it. We need it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> all the current global economies are just collapsing. Exactly. I mean, it can't be the seized. The US dollar anymore. just sucks balls right now. Look at PayPal. I mean, they're seizing accounts and Mastercard yeah, stopping yeah. payments to WikiLeaks. What the fuck is that? That is so against like nearly. Everything I well, believe in. Why does WikiLeaks take this up? Like, why they have? Why uh, Singularity Institute has. You can donate to Singularity Institute. In Bitcoins. In Bitcoins. You can donate to Erowid. You can donate to tons of places, That's actually. Awesome. Yeah. I love if, I love if um, things start getting hectic and everyone just starts putting all their money into Bitcoins. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, just give me as many as I can get with this much money. Yeah. Like, oh, you get this many. Well, see, then you get into the, uh, it, it comes in waves. Like, I've been watching it a bit and seeing as it's mentioned in the news, you yeah. get all these new people coming up and you just watch the value of the Bitcoin just drop. Because oh, <laughs> they're going through, but it's going to reverse so as we start approaching the, the, the limit because then people are just going to start sitting on it. So it's, well, it's a lot of market volatility. 
I'm not sure. That seems like a really horrible no, flaw that it, should be fixed. It's not It's not a massive thing because, I mean, it does equal out quick because there's a lot of trading. Like, there's a lot of arbitrage. People are making money off trading, you know, providing yeah. liquidity to the system. Uh, it, it, it'll be something that'll be worked out. I guess at some point you'd, you'd want to sell them. Yeah, that's you it. Wouldn't, you wouldn't sit them on, on them indefinitely. Exactly. Like, there yeah, have been a few points. people, um, I know a lot in the forums and stuff, people buying like 10 grand worth of Bitcoins and they just want to sit on them. That doesn't really help Crap. the system. So, I mean... I guess at this point we're watching it because everyone in there wants the system to succeed or else nothing works. Yeah. So well, we might face these problems later on, but I mean, the very fact that this, if it does start succeeding, this will be the precursor to the real system. It won't be Bitcoins, but there, this is going to find its niche. And I think we might start seeing very shortly governments getting very upset, <laughs> very upset, which just makes me delighted. And then they won't be able to stop it. Like, no, no, they exactly. haven't been able to stop, you know, bit torrents. No, God, no. Same thing. So yeah, bit of bit. Awesome. <laughs> come, come check this out. Set up a miner if you want. If you've got a graphics card that's say reasonably good, there's a good wiki about it saying like how fast they can, um, they can actually make per electricity cost. So it's so definitely worth checking it out. You just leave it running overnight can work well, make some extra money, start contributing to the Bitcoin economy. And trust me, if you want to actually start making a big impact or actually get some, get some actually good money, start actually focusing on creating a few apps or something around the Bitcoin system. It would be incredible. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll catch you guys later. This has been High 45, episode 53, I think. I don't know anymore. No, I'm not <laughs> I sure haven't even wanted to edit to catch up. Yeah. <laughs> so sorry, guys. I'll be out soon. Yep. Oh. Hey, I'm Nathan Woods. I'm Tristan Grace. Catch you Catch next you later. week. Or maybe the week after. No, it'll be I'm next week this time. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> no, don't hold me on that promise. Uh-oh. No, bye. Hey guys, Nathan here. So I'm just going to run through how to actually set up Bitcoin and how to set up uh, a GPU miner, a, a GUI miner, so you can actually mine some Bitcoins. Um, so the first thing you want to do is go to Bitcoin.org and just download their standard uh, Bitcoin client. So just install that. And then what this will do is this gives you your Bitcoin wallet, is what they call this. And so here's your unique hash code, which you actually use to accept payments from people. Um, so you can see here, I've got a whole bunch of payments that I've kind of uh, had. This is from my, my mining. I just recently paid Tristan uh, all my coins thinking that... Uh, <laughs> When I uninstalled this, thinking I'd lose them, so I paid him. So that's going to be interesting trying to get them back. So we'll see what happens there. So anyway, this is your Bitcoin wallet. Yep, pretty cool. Um, but what you want to do now is set up a, a GUI miner, a GUI miner. Um, so if you just search for this in Google, POCLBM-GUI, and just hit the first link. And this is just a Windows uh, uh, GUI miner that someone's actually put together. So just install the XE. Run that. Uh, just extract it to wherever. I'm just going to extract it to desktop. Cool. Um, so we can go open that up. Awesome. But now what we want to do is uh, sign up to, they call it a Bitcoin pool. So there's a bunch of them out there. Uh, the one we use at the moment is called DeepBit. So if you go to deepbit.net and just register. So we'll just make it We'll sign up as a new one here, fans at high 45. Uh, create a new account. Bam. Okay, so then you get this screen. So what you want to do then is go back to the GUI miner. I'm oh, sorry, back to your, your wallet and grab this code. Copy and paste that into here. Set this to about one and hit save settings. So that's kind of linked the two now. So if you go back to the the miner here and actually select deep bit from the drop down and then put in the email you, you created or you used. And that's it. Hit start mining. And there it goes. So I'm getting about 170 mega hashes a second. Uh, I think Tristan gets about 230, something like that. If you go to the, the Bitcoin... Uh, the Bitcoin, uh, what's it called? It's called something. The Bitcoin forums, uh, the wiki, sorry. And you go here, um, there's a hardware comparison. So you can actually see what your GPU, what your graphics card can actually handle and whether it's worth uh, doing, uh, doing the mining. Um, I think it's mining hardware comparison. 
So you can look up your, your graphics card here and see whether it's actually worth, uh, whether you actually get more Bitcoins back in reference to how much you're being charged for electricity and yeah. So that's that's it. And you actually start to see your Bitcoins in your wallet will go up over time as, as, these, as the Bitcoins are handed out. Hope that helps. Catch you later. Bye.